Welcome to the fourth video on rate of change and slope. You can see by the objectives that this video is going to define slope and the term rate of change. We're going to find slope from a graph. We're going to find slope from two points. And we're going to find slope from an actual equation. And they call that the rate of change, rate of change and slope. Please write this definition in your composition notebook. The rate of change is a ratio or a fraction, a fraction is a ratio, that compares how much one quantity changes on average relative to the change in another quantity. So for instance, the slope might be defined as a rate of change obtained by finding the change in the y values divided by or over the change in x. That triangle is delta and it just means change in. So for instance, if I were looking at this graph over here, this graph, I have two points and I want to know what the rate of change is for this. Then I would find the change between these two points in the y value. So I would count one, two, three, four. And then I would write that over the change in x. So I would count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. It's going back in the negative direction, so this would be negative 5. So the rate of change for this particular line would be negative 4 over 5. Remember that you can put negative 4 over 5, or you can put 4 over negative 5, or you can put the negative out here, and they all mean the same thing. So once again, you can find slope from a graph, and this is probably the simplest way. Slope, oftentimes use the letter M for slope. Another way to say this instead of the rate of change is rise over run. All right, so I want to see the Y. I'm going to go ahead and do that rate of change again, the change in Y over the change in X. And this is not a formula, right? This is just counting. So I'm going to start here at the red dot, and I'm going to count the rise up 1 so that it's level with this other point. I mean, sorry, up to 1, 2. So that would be 2. And then I would count 1, 2, 3, 4, and I'm going to the positive direction. So that's 2 over 4, which is 1 half. So the rate of change for this, or the slope of this line, would be 1 half. All right, just as we found the slope from a graph, we could also find the slope from two points. Now, one strategy might be to graph these two points on a coordinate plane, draw the line in between the two points, and then do the rise over run counting method that we did just on that last screen. But there's another way that you can do this using algebra, algebra or using just simple numerics, and that's using the formula for the slope. So the slope is generally given the variable m, m is the change in y over the change in x. And if I'm doing this formula, what you'll see here is that this is the x-coordinate and the y-coordinate. And since this is a different set of coordinates, this will be x sub 2, y sub 2. So the little 1s and 2s just mean that the 1s go together with these two coordinates and the 2s go together here. And so the formula is I'm going to do the change in y over the change in x. Now, the 1's and the 2's don't really matter. What matters is the order. So, for instance, if I say 2 minus 1 on the top, then I've got to do 2 minus 1 on the bottom. What this means over here is that I would say 3 minus a negative 4 and negative 1 minus 2. So that tells me that if I'm going from this point to this point, then I need to do the other coordinate in that same direction. So they will go, so I could do it this way. I could say this one minus this, this one minus this. The numbers don't matter, the order does. Order matters. Order matters. This is important. Okay, so I'm going to do the slope is, and I have, I'm going to go this direction. So I'm going to have 3 minus negative 4, and I'm going to go this direction. So I'm going to do negative 1 minus 2. And I purposely gave a bunch of negatives here because those are the hardest ones to do. 3 minus a negative 4 is plus, so this is 7. 
negative 1 plus a negative 2 is a negative 3. So the slope of this line is rising 3 and um, negative going back in the opposite direction uh, for 3. So there's another way that you can determine the rate of change from an equation. And when they say rate of change, they mean slope. Right? Change in y over the change in x. Only this time we're going to use an equation. And what would be very helpful here is to put the equation into slope-intercept form. Okay, slope-intercept form is y equals mx plus b. So the important thing on here is that it's y equals, y is by itself over here, the coefficient is 1, understood to be 1, the m is the slope, and the b is the slope intercept, or where the graph crosses the y-axis. Okay, So what I want to do is put this equation so that it says y equals. So you can see I'm going to need to move the 12x to the other side of the equation, and the 3 to the other side of the equation, and then probably divide by negative 4. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to do negative 12x minus 12x, no like terms, so it's going to stay, minus 3 minus 3. Okay, that gets rid of, and I have negative 4y equals negative 12x, and I subtract, plus 13. And then I'm going to divide all the way through by negative 4, and I have y equals 3x minus 13 over 4. All right? So looking at y equals mx plus b, the m is 3 m equals 3. 3 is the rate of change. All right. Now, fractions. This is always the one that gets everybody on fractions. Okay, so um, I had to write it sideways because of my uh, software that I'm using. But I don't like to work with, I don't like fractions all that much. I mean, they're okay, but I just don't care for them. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply through um, by a common multiple of 6 and 8. 6 and 8 both go into 24. Okay, and this is going to get kind of scary, but here we go. Wait, 24. Sorry. So when I multiply through by 24, 24 over 6 is 4y. 24 over 8 is um, goes in 3. 3 times 3 is 9. 9x equals... 24 times 24, which I can't remember what that is. 24, 6, 9, 8, 4. That's not right. 6, 9, 8. Yeah, it is. 576. That's what it is. So 21 scares is 576. All right, so I'm going to do the same thing. So I have 4y equals negative 9x. I subtracted the 9x to the other side plus 576, and divide through by 4. Okay, and I don't need this number, so I don't need to figure it out. What I need is this number, which is my slope, and so my slope is negative 9 fourths. All right, so you should have those examples in your notes. I want you to also work these two problems in your composition notebook on your own to make sure that you understand how to do things. I want you to find the slope using the equation for number one, and then I want you to solve for y in the standard form of this equation to find the slope or the rate of change. I need to see your work, and I need to see these two problems in the composition notebook, and I will be checking. All right? So good luck, and I will see you in class.